Hi, this is a quick look at the Fenix Pro PAS225X UHF antenna distribution system, uh, particularly the directivity of the paddles and what that does compared to omnidirectional aerials that you might connect directly to the unit. So that's the distribution amp itself. Uh, the kit comes with two of these as well as all the interconnecting leads as well. On the back of the distribution unit you have five outputs, there's four shown there, but the link output is just another output. Um, so you can either do five units in one rack or you can link uh, other systems together. It comes with two of these paddle aerials. It looks like they might fold in half down the middle, but they don't in fact, that's just the aerial bit. Um, but importantly they have an active amplifier to boost the RF signal directly on the paddle itself. There it is in the rack connected in with two EWD Sennheiser modern digital systems uh, as well as a couple of old um, G2 Sennheiser uh, systems on channel 70 which is about 860 or make something of that nature. Um, so I've actually added some BNC's, the cutouts are already there on the distribution system but uh, you have to add the BNC's yourself unless you go straight from the back of the unit. Here's the amplifier, it goes up in half dB steps where it says 2 there's actually plus 1 dB uh, and goes all the way up to 16 uh, half dB steps so that's plus 8 dB. Some of that will be making up for losses in the cable uh, on the way. So uh, I've only connected one antenna for the purposes of these tests. It's actually a diversity system, so in normal use it will take the best of one of the two signals being received uh, and switch automatically between those. Um, but I've only connected one into this system so that I can kind of take a paddle like this and sweep it around. Uh, what am I sweeping? Well, outside I've got two microphones turned on, one digital one and one analog. The first is on the edge of that wall there. There it is, uh, and that's a G2 on channel 70 at about 830-ish, something like that, megahertz. Uh, the other behind that palm there at the edge of the garage lip is on a stand, and that's an EW, uh, EWD835 uh, capsuled mic, um, and they're just sitting there kind of uh, transmitting uh, to be received. I don't know how long the garden is, 20 metres maybe, maybe 30, I don't know. Uh, it isn't a completely direct line of sight uh, into here, um, but importantly, if I point the antenna at the floor, so right away from the um, uh, microphones you can see that I'm getting some signal there but yeah it mutes out it goes red on the display uh, on the analog system digital ones holding fast there it's got a two uh, to three uh, sort of blocks on the RF level but oh look it completely mutes out as well if I point it in the other direction so directivity of the aerial is obviously important Okay, so if I kind of gradually sweep around and, and try and sort of point this antenna more at the microphones themselves, which is what you would do in normal use, uh, then we can see the effect of that. So I'll start over on the left there, off axis, the analog one's dropped out, and then gradually I'll bring it around, uh, and you can see on the bottom unit there, the uh, level, the RF level is sort of just increasing and actually gets up to quite a decent level. A similar thing on the digital system that's holding fast at uh, plus three and it's a pretty reliable system. But that's with 0 dB of gains. There'll be some loss down the BNC cable. If I now push it up to uh, 8 dB of gain, um, so the maximum amplification there, uh, then you can see that the RF1 has gone to plus four. Um, uh, uh, segments on the LCD uh, display showing uh, and the analog one has also gone to I think pretty much full scale um, and if I go off axis again uh, you can see that it drops right down so there we are pointing on axis uh, and you get a, a good kind of signal level there uh, directly from the antenna Okay, uh, if I uh, now kind of wind this right down uh, to naught again, you can see how easy it is to adjust. It does remember the setting uh, that's there. Um, and I will uh, immediately you know, lose lock. Uh, in a live situation, you'll have these up high above the audience pointing at the stage so they've got direct line of sight um, and that's the way that you would use these. You wouldn't have these pointing at the side of the stage. They're two directional and people could wander in and out of, uh, of range on those. 
So just by comparison, I've put some half wave antennas on here. These are fixed, they're omnidirectional, uh, so pointing them in any direction doesn't make any difference. Uh, it's just to sort of show you've got like two. It's not, still quite impressive, really. Those microphones are quite a long way away. It hasn't got direct line of sight. Um, and the RF level was sort of minus 20. Uh, 25 dB there on the analog one um, but you know a reasonable connection but you certainly wouldn't use that live and as soon as you've got an audience between that system and uh, the microphones themselves you would lose uh, connectivity and your show would be a disaster uh, so I've also done a similar thing this time with quarter wave uh, aerials these are uh, the ones supplied with these dis digital units quite an impressive uh, solid three there on the digital system uh, but a much lower what was that 15 uh, or so on the channel 70 analog system um, so pretty poor I mean they do fine if they're at the side of the stage you know you're only a few meters and only a few musicians in between the microphones and uh, where they are um, but uh, if you have all of those options then you can kind of configure and set your system uh, accordingly you don't want too much gain but you don't want too little either so that's just a very brief uh, overview sort of test I would like to have seen before I bought them but on the whole I'm very pleased with them uh, seems to be pretty well built